Today's reading scripture is 1 John 1, 9-10. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and righteous to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. After Golden Light Choir's praise, we'll watch the Senior Pastor's video sermon lecture on First John, the third session. Brothers and sisters in Christ, church members of Brain Church's local sanctuaries, and to see and viewers, it was said that we have fellowship with God and we can be forgiven of our sins by the blood of Jesus when we dwell in the light as God is light. But if we don't confess our sins but deny them, then we can ne neither be forgiven nor receive salvation. Here, we should have a correct understanding of the meaning of confessing your sins. Literally speaking, it means we openly admit to the sins that we committed, but confession in the sight of God is not just done with words. It has to be followed by the deed of turning away from sins. Without turning away from sins, confessing your sins with your lips is cheating and lying. After confessing, we must not commit the same sin again, and we also have to cast off the root of the sinful nature itself. Some people attend church, but they freely commit the same sins to the same extent as worldly people. They cheat others, quarrel, get angry at other, others, and live in darkness, sin, seeking their own benefit. And when they repent of them on Sunday, they think they can be forgiven of all their sins. But when we just repent with only our lips, after willfully committing sins, it is not true repentance. Just as a dog returns to its vomit and a soul, after washing returns to her wallow and a myrrh, it is something that God deems detestable. If you just repent with uh, your lips and commit the same sin again, then you're doing a detestable thing before God, and you're no different than dogs or souls. Second Peter 2.20-22 says, For if after they have escaped the defilements of the world by the knowledge of the Lord and Jesus, Savior Jesus Christ, because you know Christ, because you know the truth. You get out of darkness and walk in, in the light. They are again entangled in them and are overcome. The last state has become worse for them than the first, for it would be better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than having known it, to turn away from the holy com commandment handed on to them. They came to know the word of God, which is truth, which is light, which is the will of God. It would have been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than to have known it and then to turn back their backs on the sacred command that was passed on to them. If they sin, knowing it, then it is even graver. If they sin without knowing it, though it is still sin, but it is relatively lighter. 22 says, it has happened to them according to the true proverb, a dog returns to its own vomit, and a sow after washing returns to wallowing in the mud. Maybe young people today can understand what it is, but when I was uh, living in the countryside in 1950s, those were poor days, so dogs couldn't be fed meat like today. They eat then vomit, eat and vomit, over and over again. For pigs, even though they're washed, they just go back to their wallowing in the mud. No matter how I wash them, it means nothing. They just go back to their wallowing and their own waste. 
Well, this is not how people raise pigs today, but it used to be in the past. That's why the Lord gave these examples. God says, if you sin again after repenting, you're no different than dogs and souls. You shouldn't be like, dog, like, them, like them. Again, you shouldn't like dogs or souls. If you just conf confess with lips and com commit sins again, it is not just that we are not forgiven, just commit a greater sin called calling God's name in vain. True repentance is not done just with lips. It is cheering our hearts in the morning, saying we love and believe in God, we committed a sin which God the Father hates so much, so by grieving the heart of the dear Father, So how sorrow and embarrassed we are, so we wake up, make up our mind not to commit the sin again, and we must not commit the same sin again. Each year, we see and experience so many signs and wonders and works of power. You, yourself, your family members, your brothers and sisters in faith, and even so many overseas mission, overseas members, testifies about God's countless signs and wonders and power. If you sin again after repenting, then to God, you are a dog and soul. You shouldn't be like that. When we repent truly this way, then God will not remember the sin and set it as far as the east is far from the west. But if we say we are repenting with our lips but continue to live in darkness, God will not accept our repentance and finally will not receive salvation. If you repent falsely, did God accept it? No, that's why you have nothing to do with salvation. It is like willfully committing sins again and again, knowing it is sin, as in Hebrew chapter 6 and 10, and it is also like crucifying the Lord all over again, so God would forsake you, God would not give you the spirit of repentance, so you can't be saved. Brothers and sisters, let us look into the next verse, verse 10. It says, if we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. This verse restates the word in the previous verses 6 to 8. All mankind are sinners who are original sin and self-committed sins. Even though they try to live in righteousness, they realize that they were pathetic sinners if they reflect upon themselves with the law of God. So, when people say, I have no sin, means they consider the word of God that tells us all mankind are sinners is a lie. It is to forsake the love of God who gave us His one and only Son, Jesus Christ. After all, it is to profane God and just like blaspheming against the Holy Spirit, the sin is one that ought be forgiven. In the last session, I explained that we can realize the untruths in us if we have a truth in us. Just as dirt is revealed by light shown, we can realize the evil in us that we couldn't realize before. When the truth comes into you, your sinful natures are revealed. To the extent that we take in the Word of God as our spiritual bread, we can realize the evil in us when we reflect upon ourselves with the truth. We say we are sinless, even though we have not cast off sins completely and have not yet entered into spirit, and it means we don't have the word of God in us. Most of you here have confessed your sins and accepted the Lord Jesus. You have been forgiven of sins, received the Holy Spirit, and become the children of God. But this is not all. Even though we have been saved, We need to continue to try to reach the full measure of the Christ. We shouldn't just stay at the level where we are justified by faith, but we have to change to actually become righteousness, I mean become righteous. In order for this to happen, we need to continuously admit and confess our sins. After listening to the sermons and advice of others, we can change only if we admit our shortcomings. 
If we don't admit in heart that we really had such shortcomings and sins, we can't really change. For example, a person who likes jesting hears that he has to cast away jesting in order to have a truthful heart. Hearing such a word, if he acknowledges the fact that he is jesting because he has an untruthful heart, then he may try to change himself. But if he thinks like, I do it just for fun, or I do it to liven things up, then he can't change himself. As he keeps on trying to say all the words in truthfulness to cultivate a truthful heart, he can also find out something that he couldn't. Suppose there are two people, one person never jokes, he always speaks truthful words, the other person jokes quite often, he makes people laugh and liven things up, but which one of them would be more reliable and trustworthy? The one who never jokes is more trustworthy than the one who jokes quite often. Not just jesting, but he can also realize his cunning mind that was hidden deep inside his heart. As he tries to acknowledge his shortcomings and to put the truth in him, that truth will shine more light on him. As he continues this process, he will eventually cast away untruths one by one and become perfect through casting off untruths and coming forth in the truth and in the light. It is why you are changing into man of God. To the extent that you change yourself, you become healthy, you receive blessings, you become leaders, and you are loved by God, not just God's love. You'll be loved by your family members and people around you. On the other hand, if we don't confess our sins but say we are not sinful, but then we can cast away our fleshly natures. It is if this above person gives such exercises, how can you say I'm too untruthful just because I joke a little bit? We have a fun in friendships when we have some jesting. How dry is our life without it? And he can't find out his real self. Suppose I joke around and say silly words quite often, then how can you trust me? No matter how I tell you the truth, it will be like, maybe that's a joke again, and you would not believe what I say. I'm always telling the truth, yet there are some people who don't believe what I say. If I ever joke, how can they trust me? Those who do not admit their shortcomings will be spiritually asleep after all. Even though they don't directly deny that they committed sins, if they stop circumcising their heart this way, it is the same as saying that they are sinless. If this kind of condition continues, one may seem he is full of spirit for some time, but the Holy Spirit will be quenched a little by little. He may even reach a situation where it is difficult to be saved. Let me give you another example of not receiving forgiveness of sins because we don't confess our sins. It is when we repent, but God doesn't accept it. I often see some people who come to me and ask for my prayer, feeling worried even though they already repented of their sins. There is a case when God doesn't accept your repentance. For example, some people commit such grave sins as blasphemy against the Holy Spirit and say they repented. But in God's sight, He may point out that this person continues to blaspheme the Holy Spirit even after, after repenting and He didn't circumcise His heart. So he can't be saved. The reason why I continue to talk about sins leading to death is because of such cases. Because I can't directly tell them, 
and giving them advice and discernments so they can realize it and receive salvation. But if but if I directly tell them, they will probably say they didn't really do that. They may say, I didn't do that on purpose. I just casually said a couple of things and it was a mistake. It wasn't really a great sin. A word has the power of life and death. It really is a big deal, so don't treat it lightly. They unwillingly repented because uh, there were people who heard what they said, but their repentance was not even the repenting with tearing the heart. They may even think, why does he talk about past things that I already repented before? Of course, if you truly repented, God doesn't remember even though you committed grave sins. But what God is pointing out in this case is that they said they did wrong, but their repentance was a repent of the heart. A person who committed a grave sin leading to death comes to me and repents. Then I pray for him, and then God says his repentance was not accepted. because he didn't turn away from the heart. After some time, he was seen again. I often see this happen. That's because people don't repent from the heart. If they don't repent from the heart, even though they receive my prayer, it is useless. It's not the repentance from the heart. They didn't turn away from sin under this critical situation. They seem to repent at the moment, but as time passes, they just go back like dogs and souls. In this case, God doesn't ever take the repentance from the beginning. Can God be deceived? Can anyone ever deceive God? If repentance is not from the heart, God does not accept it. The blasphemy itself is a grave sin, but in most cases, they accumulate many more sins before they commit such grave sin. For example, there is a son who cursed death, spat on his father. If this son could do that, how would, be, how would he have generally treated his parents. He just cursed that and spit on his father by mistake if he had been always respectful, respectful and loving toward his parents. Of course not. means he lacks the respect for his parents and he normally looked down upon his parents. Likewise, in the case of blasphemy against the Holy Spirit, you shouldn't just think about your momentary mistake, but your heart and deeds that you had until that happened. You came to say something that you must have uh, never said because you had arrogance and self-seeking mind, not being spiritually awake. But you don't realize the heart of yours and say, I didn't do it on purpose, and it wasn't even something big. This way, you don't admit your sin. A person says he already repented and is forgiven now, but God still says he is full of sin. If you have a truth in you, then even if you are in great hardship, it, you will not say anything easily that can break God's heart. You may something experience, sometimes experience something you can really understand or something overwhelming for you. In these situations, if you complain or express resentment, it means your faith is small. If you know the truth just a little bit, you'd rather lose your mouth not to make any walls of sin before God. If you say anything unrighteous, even though it may be something trivial, your heart will feel very afflicted. Your heart will ache whenever you remember it and you will make up your mind again and again not to do such a thing ever again. 
And you can't just consider it lightly if you said something to blaspheme the Holy Spirit. You can't just say it was a mistake or you already repented and it is history. I gave you an ex the example of father and son before. The son did such a troubled thing to his father. In that situation, if he just says, Father, I'm sorry, it was just a mistake, I swear on to that again. So are we good? Then would the father be okay with that? Son dared to insert his father with such a troubled deed. And how can his father's hard feeling go away? If the son really feels sorry about it, what should he do? Today, tomorrow, a year later, he has to do nice to him, he has to obey him, he has to serve him, he has to respect him well from the heart. And his father's wounded heart can melt away and go back to their good relationships. If you really repent it, there must have been thoroughly repentance and render, rending the heart. Then you had to change completely and bear the fruit of repentance in your daily life. But those who fall into the cases that I am explaining now say that they repented, but they don't cast away their arrogance and selfish motives. If they don't like something, they also have repented. resentment against their shepherd or the church. They easily speak words of complaints about the things that are done by God's will. Who on earth would have uh, so many trials as I had? There are not many in the time of Old and New Testament. I was uh, falsely accused. I was betrayed so many times. I did good things on me. I prayed so, for mon so many people. And they received healings. They met God. And uh, I helped many poor people. I didn't use the church finance. While so many trials and tribu tribulations, I've never complained to God, I've never resented God, I've never even said, God, my life is hard. All I did was rejoice and give thanks and do my best to fulfill my given duty to give glory to Him. Most people, however, they don't love God. They don't live according to the word of God. They live in darkness while God is in the light. And they say, God did not answer me. God did not answer my prayers. No, they're talking nonsense. For me, God so well answers me, so well answers my prayers. And you don't know that. Anything I ask, He give to me. Then why not them? Why not you? Anybody can receive answers when they ask, seek, and knock where there is a condition, though. When you walk in the light and you live in the truth, then your heart don't condemn you. You can ask God whatever you wish, and it will be done to you. But if you don't lead your life that way and say, God doesn't answer you, then you got it all wrong. They easily speak words of complaints about the things that are done by God's will. They want to be served having great and untruthful mind. They, this way, they give hard time to the others, but they don't realize their evil. They skip prayers often, They don't consider it serious, thinking it is not a great sin. That is why God says if they continue to act that way, it's difficult for them to even be saved. There is also quite an opposite case. He has been faithful with all his life, and when I give advice on arrogance, he repents with tears immediately. It's not even because he realizes what his arrogance is right away. Even though he doesn't realize what his arrogance is, he trusts his shepherd and just accepts his word, then he tries to realize what he has to repent.
He doesn't give such excuses as I didn't mean to, to do that. I think some people misunderstand my intention and made a wrong report to you, Senior Pastor. I didn't have a resentment thinking I did so much work, being faithful with all my life. How can you rebuke me this way? He just tries to realize what his arrogance is and tells me with tears, thank you for your rebuke. We we'll change quickly. These kinds of people are indeed changed. Not long after that, they come to realize that they are being changed. Why they are pointed out what their arrogance was, and they pray the Holy Spirit lets them realize it. Actually, I didn't even tell him that directly, but he accepts all the regular sermons as were given to him personally. So if he finds any shortcomings, he repents immediately. He doesn't consider trivial things trivial, consider trivial things trivial, but he acknowledges his shortcomings and changes himself, thereby going into a spirit quickly. You have heard me praising this kind of person so many times, so what would you do? Miss, I am rebuking you for some t something you don't even understand in front of so many people and what you'd feel in that situation. Would you be able to say something like, I can acknowledge my faults and change them. I will receive it with thanks and joy, and joy without being disappointed or disheartened. You can do that to the extent that you love God, you have truth in you, and you trust your shepherd who has been confirmed by faith. As Timothy 5.15 says, it is a truthful, trustworthy statement, deserving full assurance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners among whom I am for foremost of all. Even before he met the Lord, the Apostle Paul lived according to the word of God, and he was blessed, blameless in the law. After he met the Lord, he lived even more of a blameless and perfect life. And yet he says he was the foremost of all sinners who forgot what had lain behind him and pressed on toward the goal, which is the perfection of Jesus Christ. I hope you will also reflect yourself upon the Word of God, which is the light. If you receive any advice or rebuke, don't say you are not like that, but accept it with joy so that you can become blameless and perfect. If you find any form of flesh in you, I urge you to confess it and cast it away, although it's trivial. As you keep on acting that way, you will be full of the Holy Spirit. You will be guided to the way of sanctification. You will become children of light who have true heart and perfect faith, the true children of God. I said that First John chapter 1 says, God, who is light, planned human cultivation and sent the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ came to this earth to save the sinners and give them true life. We lived in darkness before, but when we confess our sins and walk in the light, we can be forgiven of our sins and receive salvation through the blood of Jesus. When we acknowledge our old self and try to change ourselves, God gives us strength and makes us children of light who are sanctified. In the next session, I will begin to talk about the chapter 2. Let me conclude the message. Matthew 5.14 says, You are the light in the world. And Matthew 5.16 says, Let your light shine over men in such a way that they will see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. When you do good deeds, people around you give glory to God. 
The person goes to church and he is so nice. But if you don't live in the light but live in darkness, people say, hey, that person goes to church but he is evil like that. You are disgracing God. When you do good deeds, you make them give glory to God. However, when you live in darkness, you are disgracing God. Whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, you should do it for the glory of God. If you disgrace God rather than give glory to Him, then how can you ex expect to receive blessings? In heaven, there is no darkness but only light. But in this world, where we are being cultivated, there are both the light and darkness. God's children should dwell in light and do the whole duty of man. This way, they have to become the light in this dark way. As you dwell in the brighter light, you will have a deeper fellowship with God. You can have a deeper communication and inspiration of the Holy Spirit. You can understand God's heart and will more clearly. You can receive greater blessings in spirit and body. God will be with you in all matters and confirm you. I believe you are already experiencing how blessed and joyous it is to have fellowship in your lives. Even though you can enjoy the greatest pleasures of this world, it can't be compared with the spiritual joy that you can enjoy in your fellowship with God. Physical pleasure is just momentary, and if you know the truth, affliction will follow you and you will be nervous all the time. Why isn't the way to, se to heaven? But when you are on the track to heaven, God gives you grace from above, and you will be filled with the Holy Spirit. In a word, the spiritual pleasure is far greater than physical pleasure. Momentary pleasure on this earth, and eternal pleasure in heaven, which one are you going to choose? When you deny yourself and forsake your old self, the joy and happiness that come from above are so great. Furthermore, if you can have a prosperity in each moment of your life through the guidance of the Holy Spirit, your life will be so exciting. You'll be full of thanks and testimonies and give glory to God wherever you go, wherever you go. You will prosper in your workplace and your family will also be evangelized quickly. As you have bright light, you can also drive away darkness from those whom you meet. For example, when you counsel somebody, his problem will be solved and he will feel freed. Also, you can drive away the freely, fleshly thoughts and negative feelings from other people so you can encourage them to act within the truth. Especially if you are pastors or leaders, you must be longing for this kind of authority so much. Then I urge you to resemble God, who is the light, by trying your best to dwell in the light completely. I pray in the name of the Lord that in doing so, you will enjoy fellowship with God and the Lord, just as the hymns lyrics go. It is so sweet to walk with Jesus. <laughs> それは命与える救いの